uh, wasn't satisfied with the first uh, games, I mean the, the previous Hunger Games, and then later on uh, he decided to uh, prepare another quarter quell. Uh, this time the 75th years uh, uh, games celebration and uh, while all the uh, old winners from the um, old tributes, let's say previous winners, uh, will be selected to uh, enter this this Hunger Games, and by doing this, so of course, well, when we look at the twelfth district, we see that only um, Katniss, um, Pitha, and Hamish were the people uh, alive, uh, still alive. So while uh, President Snow, of course, designed it deliberately to to uh, to send Katniss into a definite death because uh, he was a man of uh, revenge. I mean, he was going to re revenge himself in this or that way. And, uh, well, the thing is, of course, meanwhile, um, he uh, creates another, uh, uh, you know, uh, way to, to maybe to connect people um, more uh, and more emotionally to the games. Well, uh, he said he was going to hold the he was going to hold the, the, the marriage uh, ceremony of uh, Katniss and uh, Pita, and then uh, Katniss uh, well uh, declared. Of course, that was a fake. That was fake news. And she declared she was pregnant, and this created a kind of a huge, of course, effect on the people because. Well, uh, uh, I mean, sending children to the death is something. Sending a pregnant uh, child to the to this ar arena is something else. Uh, anyway, well, uh, we actually understand that well, um, there had been some uh, backdoor deals, and um, uh, so well, when these uh, tributes have been called to train themselves once again for the Hunger Games, well. Katniss, well, uh, of course, she watches uh, the previous games and she gets lots of strategies, tactics, and she tr she she uh, had she had a chance to see uh, the the strategies and the ways that the previous uh, fighters how they fight, how they kill their um, opponents, and so on and so forth. But we understand that well, Hamid uh, suggests. Uh, creating uh, some alliances with the, um, uh, the other tributes and one of them uh, would be of course uh, for um, uh, Katniss would be Finnick and uh, well he's a very interesting actually um, uh, what a very interesting uh, contestant well, Finnick is um, both very handsome, he's charming, but later on we understand that everything was a design of, you know, these uh, Hunger Games to create a kind of a charm or, in fact, uh, for people. And Finnick and the others, uh, we see um, uh, later on uh, other characters uh, like, um, for example, BD and uh, later on, uh, how uh, he becomes a kind of a um, what a very uh, clever um, inventor, and then uh, well we know also uh, later on how uh, helpful he would be, and so on and so forth. And anyway, um, well they were of course. Uh, they will be, uh, and also wires will, would be the other uh, f figure uh, to, to, of course, uh, to complete BD. And uh, they, they have been called vaults and nuts because they were a little bit crazy with their, you know, interesting ideas. They are not, I mean, superior due to their physical, you know, physical um, features, but because of their uh, strategies and tactics, they were inventors and where they can kill uh, their opponents uh, by creating some you know weapons and so on and so forth um, uh, actually uh, well uh, we know that um, 
as I told you, there were some uh, backdoor deals in this uh, second, uh, you know, uh, Hunger Games, uh, where they have been um, forced to uh, fight once again. Well, uh, and meanwhile, uh, well, such uh, strategies will be uh, developed uh, at the battlefield. We, we see that, well, actually, everyone was trying to save uh, Katniss' life, and they have been, um, uh, well, um, they have been um, uh, gathered around uh, Katniss to, to save her life. Because we understand that, well, it's not Katniss that's superior over others. I mean, she is, uh, of course, a good uh, fighter. But the thing is, uh, she has been the symbol of the uh, rebellion. So, from time to time, well, uh, rather than being a real physical leader, you have a leader who would, uh, or who uh, might become a kind of a symbol for your uh, rebellion who might uh, drive you to to you know find the necessary force find the necessary power in yourself to to uh, rise up and fight against the uh, capital so um, in a way uh, Katniss has become this symbol for the rest of the people so her life uh, in that sense was um, highly critical for the others to to the for the rest of the rebellion. So then we understand that Finnick, Hamish, um, Plutarch, and the others, well, they have been planning this, and uh, most probably they have had some connections with the thirteenth, uh, of course. Um, what um, uh, district? And uh, during the games, uh, well. We uh, see that with the plans of BD, well, they were able to, well, uh, actually explore the rest of the fences and uh, some um, helicopters uh, from the uh, District 13 come and uh, pick um, what uh, Katniss, uh, Hamish, together with Hamish, of course. Katniss uh, and Finnick and uh, the others to, to save their lives to bring them uh, to the 13th district uh, which would be the um, of course new place for Katniss to uh, rehab, rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate herself to uh, or to um, well heal herself and uh, when it comes to the uh, Mockingjay, the third and the last book of the uh, trilogy, well, uh, we should say uh, in this book, uh, well, rather than actions, psychological uh, turmoils and psychological uh, ins and outs and resonances become more and more important because uh, later on we uh, understand that or we learn that Pita has been uh, captured by the capital and he had uh, in uh, a term hijacked he, i mean they they say he has been hijacked that means his brain has been reprogrammed by brainwashing and while well, uh, the pita uh, uh, has uh, turned into a kind of a you know a rival and an enemy to uh, katniss and the others and well, uh, President Snow makes him every day to attend live uh, interviews to to say or to, to 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 send a message to Katniss and the rest of the people to say that this war is uh, you know meaningless and they are helpless and there is no point in um, uh, um, there is no point in bloodshed anymore. They have to you know. F once and for all stop this madness and so on so forth so uh, of course um, the thing is uh, we understand uh, although capital uh, well they they hold all the um, uh, broadcasts in their power well later on we understand that uh, each district starts to um, one way or another um, to rebel against, to rise against um, uh, capital, Panem, 
and uh, as a matter of fact, um, Katniss in District 13, uh, she uh, meets with President Coyne later on. Uh, Katniss, of course, understand that uh, whether it's President Coyne or President Snow, if someone uh, tries to, you know, uh, hold the power, uh, or whether uh, they um, claim that this power depends or relies on the democracy, like Michel Foucault says, well, whoever has the democracy uh, actually has uh, the power to change everything. So, well, uh, if you have the democracy, then you have the power. So, what kind of a democracy would you be talking about? So, the, uh, will you be talking about? So, the thing is, um, here, both Coin and President Snow, one female, Coin is a female, President Snow is a male character. Well, they are actually uh, both the counterparts, but also the equal parts of each other. Uh, because at the end of the third novel, we see that of course, Katniss kills President Coin, and um, because President Snow tells her that President uh, Coin was using her, it was of course not only uh, President Snow who told uh, her the truth, but both Box, one of the President Coin's um, right hands and uh, commanders, and uh, later on, of course, Plutarch. Well, they, they understood that uh, President uh, Coyne was using Katniss as a symbol for the rebellion and she was just a tool uh, uh, for her to reach her ultimate uh, what, aim uh, to, of course, uh, to control the, the rest of the, uh, the capital. And she led each uh, district to fight against capital to, to to make them uh, more and more vulnerable to the bigger attacks and she, she watched them so she uh, used a very good strategy and uh, her strategies remind me uh, the strategies mentioned in Sun Tzu's The Art of War uh, by simply well, uh, using some uh, uh, well what um, backdoor deals or some you know rumors and so on and so forth to let your enemies consume each other and by this way you can seize the control uh, once they have weakened uh, each other. So uh, in a way, uh, of course, well, she uses conspiracies uh, as well. And well, um, meanwhile Katniss uh, has become uh, one of the real symbols of the rebellion once again and Billy has found a way to cut the broadcast of President Snow and he interferes to these broadcasts and suddenly well, the rest of the people starts to see Katniss on the uh, screen and they understand that she's alive, she's in perfect condition and then they, they with the help of Plutarch and the rest of the crew they start to send uh, Katniss into some actions and in these actions uh, although sometimes they do not plan like in the, uh, in the 8th district while Katniss uh, fights very well, he even, she even explodes one of the uh, hovercrafts uh, with her arrow and so on and so forth. So, well, in a way, uh, she has really become the, the, uh, the uh, real uh, blood, that, um, the fresh blood uh, for the, uh, 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 the other districts and the 13th district to find a cause uh, to rebel against uh, Capitol. And then, well, uh, we see that, uh, well, uh, 13th district has trained uh, their uh, soldiers and, well, they, they teach some tactics and so on and so forth. But uh, also there is one thing very interesting uh, throughout the novel, which is, well, actually, um, uh, I see uh, Susan Collins uh, uh, has taken some bits and pieces from uh, both the ancient Greek and the Roman uh, mythology and history. Uh, for example, like the brothers of Castor and Pollux, and on page uh, 121 in the, last, in the last book, well, when, uh, when, uh, when you read the lines, um, like, um, uh, by the time we reach the lake, Gale seems to have lost his ability to speak, everyone is dripping in sweat, especially Castor and Pollux in their insect shells and Cressidia calls for a break. 
I scoop up handfuls of water from the lake, wishing I could dive in and surface alone and naked and unobserved. I wander around the perimeter for a while. When I come back around to the little concrete house beside the lake, I pass in the doorway and see Gail propping the crook's poker he salvaged against the wall by the hearth. For a moment I have an image of a lone stranger, sometime far in the future, wandering lost in the wilderness and coming upon this small place of refuge with the pile of split logs the hearth the poker. Wondering how it came to be, Gale turns and meets my eyes, and I know he's thinking about our last meeting here, when we fought over uh, whether or not to run away. If we had, would District 12 still be there? I think it would be, but the Capitol would still be in the control of Panem as well. So while we see that, and while uh, her rebellion is something like the rebellion of um, cats against uh, Romans uh, to uh, to to well reclaim uh, their uh, reclaim back their maybe lands and well um, again on page 150 Katniss says well suddenly I'm reminded of another girl one who had seen all the evil and capital had to offer Johanna Mason the tribute from District 7 in the last arena. I was trying to prevent her from going to, into the jungle where the Jabberjays mimicked the voices of loved ones being tortured, but she brushed me off saying they can't hurt me. I'm not like the rest of you. There is no left I love. So that we understand that actually it is something like, well, all the um, agonies, all the, what, uh, the walls we have, they are due to the, the people that we love and if we have nothing to lose then no one can really scare us and well if we have nothing to lose well we can fight so we see that Katniss has been uh, prevented from time to time uh, from fighting since uh, she has to think about her sister and mother and the people that uh, she loved much and on page um, uh, uh, 153, another interesting line, it's on the third night during our game that I answer the question eating away at me. Crazy Cat becomes a metaphor for my situation. I am Buttercup. Pita, the thing I want so badly to secure is the light. As long as Buttercup feels he has the chance of catching the elusive light under his paws, he's bristling with aggression. That is how I have been since I left the arena with Pita alive. So it's something like the game uh, she plays with uh, Buttercup while she uses the light. And as you know, cats try to well, uh, to, to, to catch this laser, laser, uh, laser beam or uh, something like this. It's a play, but and uh, whatever happens between Pita and uh, Katniss is something like that. But, at the very beginning we said while well, Katniss is not even uh, sure herself well, whether she wants Pita or Gail and um, well also uh, later on we learned that uh, actually the name Panem have, has been uh, derived from an old um, word coming from uh, R Roman times which would be another uh, actually possibility but on page 233 um, all the city might be able to escape along for a while says Plutarch certainly there are emergency supplies stockpiled but the significant difference between 13 and the capital are the expectations of the populace 13 was used to hardship whereas in the capital they all they have known as Panem at Circenses. What is that? I recognize Panem, of course, but the rest is nonsense. It's a saying from the thousands of years ago, written in a language called Latin, about a place called Rome, he explains. Panem at Circenses translates, translates into bread and Circenses. The writer was saying that uh, in return for full bellies and entertainment, his people had given up their political responsibilities and therefore their power. 
that is very important because well it is uh, maybe a kind of a, um, a reflection of